Welcome to this video. We will be talking about Virtual Programming Lab, which is one of the plugins in Moodle. Before we know what is really VP, v, uh, VPL or Virtual Programming Lab, why do we re really need it or need anything like this? The, the reason for people coming with this is, is, as you know, if you're teaching programming, and you using a blackboard or a learning management system to do the final assessment most of the time you'll find yourself using multiple choices or using short answers where there is no ide and the student just write the code uh, uh, there and no way he or she can uh, run or test the code he just write the code and it can come with so many uh, errors so the student is not practicing really the process going through uh, to to write to write the code but yes we're still testing their programming skills and grading uh, uh, programming also will take you some time if you have a large number of students you go one by one and check the code in full details and award grade based on rubric uh, the VPL is, is one of those tools that trying to address this issue and allow the student during the assessment to, to get access to an IDE that they can use to debug, run, and evaluate uh, their code. So it is one of uh, the plugins in Moodle. Uh, Moodle is uh, a learning management system, which is an open source learning management system which uh, amazing uh, system uh, used by large number of universities and schools but this VPL if you add it to Moodle it will allow your student to write the code debug the code run it and evaluate it find is the code really producing the outcome that is expected by passing some uh, input data and seeing what are the output we'll see an example and we'll better understand what does it mean really uh, evaluate it can be used for both the VPL can be used for practical in the lab you're doing some practice in the lab or your student to practice coding test it and, and and do different thing and also it can be for assessment so where you uh, test your student uh, competencies in program VPL can grade the student work for you automatically and uh, give a grade to the student and feedback uh, based on uh, their code and based on uh, black box testing. So, so you need to add VPL activity. If you are a Moodle user, you will know that uh, all those assignment, quizzes, everything called activities. And in your course, when you are in the edit mode, you will see uh, uh, add an activity and you click there and add activity if you click you will get a window like this one which has all the activities starting from assignment going back down to many things and one of it is virtual uh, programming language and you select that one and click add then you go to the next step there are 10 steps uh, that you need to go through not really 10 because many of them are you can leave it as the default if you leave it as the default it, it will be fine but if you want to change it you can change it but there are some critical steps that you cannot move ahead without doing that first one for sure you need to enter some detailed information you need to give a name for that activity description and full description short and full description the full description you exactly explain what you want from the student uh, you want to write a java code that calculate the sum of two numbers and the user will be entering this data through keyboard things like that and maybe you have a picture there image or something you need to add a video whatever you want to add just to make the question very clear to the student and the requirement are are very clear so that uh, the general information the next thing is the submission period which again a default setting that you need to say when that activity will appear when 
it will uh, disappear. And then some restrictions on submission, like how many files the student will submit. Uh, one, two, three, four. Is it a group assignment or activity or individual? Uh, do you need a password for it? And if it is a test, use a password. And there are more uh, options in submission restrictions. We will look at them later when we do the actual um, practical. Grade, is that assignment graded? Uh, if yes, then is it a point or is it scale? Will the student see the grade? Those settings usually you have in the uh, assessment. Common module setting. There are some settings related to this module, which usually appear on the left. Do you want it to appear or not to appear to the student? Uh, uh, restrict access. And here you can go more advanced. You can restrict access by the date, by the grade of student. Uh, what is his grade? Uh, if the grade in the previous assessment is uh, X, then the student can do this assessment or not. It depends on that. User profile and also advanced setting you can do to restrict user access. If you leave it by the default, then it will uh, use the submission uh, period setting and, and will go for, for every student. Tags uh, in Moodle, uh, most learning management system, you need to tag every activity to certain program learning outcome or topics or whatever you want to do. And here you can, you can do that. Uh, competencies, uh, if your course has a list of competencies, one of it is student being able to create a function that receives parameters and return value of something like that, or student be able to uh, uh, design uh, uh, solution to uh, to programming problem. You, you write those competencies and usually you have them in the course. So you select the right competencies that that fit with the, this uh, activity. So it can be used later for reporting on student performance and other things. If a student completed that uh, uh, assignment or activity, the VPL activity, what will happen? He completed that one successfully. Will you uh, uh, assign it like that competency is completed? Or you will send this assignment for a review. Someone look at it in details and then later say this is completed or go back and ask for other activities or use it as evidence for your uh, CAF uh, course file and other, other details. These are all settings that you do you do at the beginning. Now you need to start thinking how the, the VPL will evaluate your student uh, program. How the, it will say if it met the requirement or not. And the method it uses is a, is a black box testing. So it will send some parameters to, to the code and see what the output if the output matches the expected output of those parameters, then it consider uh, meeting the requirement. And usually you have uh, three uh, test cases uh, to look at the code. You can have as much as you want. There's no limit to that, but three sometimes is reasonable and good enough uh, for the solution. So you need to give the, the test case a name, you choose a name, you need to decide what is the input that the user will input. If the user will input more than one value, you say input equal, say you will enter two and four, two and new line, four, and then you continue. And the output, the same thing, if the output will be more than one output, you display those output uh, here. We will see an example and you will see how that setting can help uh, 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 testing student code and uh, some mistakes sometimes you, you get in uh, but when you do it more and more you will find how your code will, will adjust to it. The, the last one is the execution options which has number of things. One is what language you will be using. Are you testing your student in a specific language? You want them to write it in Java or Python or whatever or you want to leave it auto 
detected. The great thing about this uh, VPL, it allows the student to choose any language. If you want to restrict, you can restrict. But if you ask student to demonstrate that they know how to create a function that receives two parameters and return value, and they use Python or you see or you for, uh, Fortran or use any other language, that's still okay. This is fine with the code. But you can also specify what code. Do you allow the student to run the code? Here, yes or no. Allow to debug, yes or no. Uh, evaluate the code, yes or no. Auto grade, yes or no. These are settings that you can do. The last one, evaluate just on submission. If you, if you make that one, yes, the student cannot evaluate his code. Is it producing the outcome or not? They can debug it and make sure it's working, it's not creating any errors, but they cannot evaluate it until they submit it uh, as a final. And that option you have, and you need to think when you use, uh, use it or not. Now let's look at a live example and see how this will work. So now I switch to my screen. And let's get here. Here is my, my model, which uh, ODW.net. You can go there and uh, play with it if you want. So we'll come here and I am in, uh, uh, the editing mode has to be on. So I just switch it off. If it's off, it's like that. If it is on, then you can add new uh, components. People uh, who used to Blackboard, uh, Blackboard has something something similar. So you select which topic you want it to be in. And you know, in Moodle, you can have a topic or have it per week. It's up to, up to you on the setting you want. And you go there, click here, and then we will find the VPL appearing here. So this is the VPL and you can go there and find some more information about VPL and other things. But let's just click OK. We are here now. Let's add the name, say add two numbers. So that's the activity and description again, add two numbers. And here we'll say write Java code that asks the user uh, the user to enter two double sorry double numbers and displays this way the total total okay maybe you want to emphasize on this word double okay you do whatever you see here the images you can add you can add a video you can link to file you can do so many things so here you need to make your coaching as much as clear as much as possible okay fine now so that the description short and the, the name Submission uh, period is here, and I'll make it available until due date 27. And you can add more options like uh, if you want. Uh, submission restrictions, I'll leave it as one. I'll make it individual work. Here you can put the password. Now I'm not going to put the password, but there are some more settings here you can do. You can disable people. Uh, uh, taking uh, copying and pasting so you want this no the student cannot copy and paste from somewhere else if you make it an example it will not be auto graded or things like graded and you can see uh, the size of the file so you want to limit it to certain size because you want to uh, get your student to optimize their code not writing long code that that does something can be written smaller. So you can do all those settings. Coming to, to the grade, this grade type of grade, point, total, scale, and we'll say 100 here. And you can say grade to pass, say if you score 60, consider pass. Otherwise, you will be uh, 
uh, yes than that and then you continue uh, you wanted to see the grid let them now see the grid but if i don't want i can make it no this is the common module settings we will show that common module settings and uh, and leave uh, uh, leave this one uh, uh, as as it is as default restriction access we're not going to change it but if you click here you will see all these things you can restrict to the date to the grade require student to achieve a specific grade before getting to this one and things like that so that you can do tag you start tagging you can add here for example this related to data type for example i just say data type and then it's added and tagged to it and these are the competencies where we can select from the course we don't have any competencies in the course and then you can decide what will happen with, with that one so this is the basic setting just the name and and description uh, release date when this one will will appeal i will appear now we have when it will be available this is appearing and this is disappearing the due date and then on the submission we did not change anything on the grade we made this hundred i think it was hundred made 60 here and that's it restriction we did not touch on the tag we added uh, data type uh, there and now we can save this one so the first part we are done with it let's see now the second part now here, here is the activity which we added so we can click on edit here once you click on edit and we need to do further thing we need few more things one is we need the execution option you can see here that's one we'll come to it and the other one we need uh, the test case i need to start by the test case here is the test case now it will open the test case i need now to decide on testing this code so i say case say uh, adding two numbers this is the case i'm calling it what is the input i'm expecting input equal one the faculty uh, the, the user will enter one and three what's the output in this case if the user enter one and three the total should be four okay i can add another input equal uh, two six five for example and five so the output will be what will be uh two seven zero point zero i'm doing double yeah remember i'm doing double so i need point zero here point zero here and and also i need the name for this so copy sorry copy this one is the same one and i can add it here so this is my second test case i'll add the third test case copy and put this one here and we will say uh, let's say uh, one five three and uh, 17 what's the total of that one 170 170.0 correct okay so we have three test cases now this is one two three yeah so this is the first test case it has input one and three and return the output will be four the other test case has 265 and 5 270 and the third i can continue on adding more test case see the name is the name same thing yeah add two numbers add two numbers i'm using the same name doesn't make any any difference so these are the test cases so the program or the the engine vpl will test my student code by passing to it these numbers and seeing what the output will be okay so let's save it now saved you see we have save here we have some other things here that's one good now the next one i'll come to the execution option which i said we'll come back to it and here you can see we have uh, 
the, the running language detected and see how many languages there Ruby is there, R is there, uh, v, uh, VHDL, Prolog, PHP, uh, MATLAB, uh, C, Java, uh, Python, all of them there, JavaScript, uh, LIPS, uh, leave them all, okay? So we'll just use auto detect and leave it as it is. Can the student run the code? Yes, I want the student to run the code. Can the student debug the code and find the errors? I'll say yes. Can uh, evaluate the code? I'll say yes. Now, once I say that, I can say auto grade yes. Okay. I'm not going to select evaluate only on submission because I want to allow my student to see the results uh, of their code, so you so you can uh, understand what I'm doing really. So save uh, settings. Now done. Let me now log in as the student. So I log out here, log out, and then log in as the student. Again, so student one, then the password. Okay, hope this I remember it now. Oh, it's good, it's going on, so you're going to the course, and then here, this is the one the student need to do. If you click there, now we are the student, yeah, student one. So student will see here the description here, and if there are images and big one, it will appear here. They see now the due date is 27 of November at 4 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, and maximum number of files is one and type of work is individual. They can click on edit and start now writing the code. Okay, so we'll code. Now we allow giving them flexibility to choose the file name, but I could have restricted that one in the setting and say use this file. And I could have provided them with a the file that already has some code in it. So they can just uh, build on that code. But anyway, I didn't do that, so I'll call this file name total.java. So that the file I want I'm going to use as a student. Now here I can start by creating class called total, and then in the class I'll have public uh, static void main. I'm just doing the main function, passing a string. Uh, array uh, something like this uh, now here I will start now declaring uh, total double total equal zero and then also I want to uh, import uh, import java dot utility dot star semicolon because I need to use the scanner okay so I come here I see scanner sorry scanner and declare something called import equal new scanner and then I'm passing system dot n semicolon now I declare a variable called x which have double and we will use input to uh, uh, read the user input here, semicolon, and double y equal input uh, next, double and semicolon. Okay, so now I'll add total, say total equal x plus y, semicolon, and then system dot out dot print ln and displaying total semicolon. So this is my code. Let's save it first. Let's save. And now is it correct? I don't know. I will just try to run it and see what will come. See on the side here, I'm getting uh, 
here is the description of the code of the requirement and here is the compilation error and there is an issue here with my compilation system should be s our case so it's very good really help student debug the code and not really not just typing in a text uh, editor that has nothing uh, useful so now came here i'll put six and seven results came uh, 13. so the code is running fine now is is it producing the outcome now comes the evaluation so the student need to evaluate it okay there is also debug here if you want to use i enable the debug if I, if I disable it it will not appear i enable run debug and evaluate this is the evaluate if i click on evaluate now it will evaluate my code and tell me if my code is passing the requirement or not remember there are three requirements and it's saying yes see look here i move this one to the side there are three tests uh, run and three tests passed if i did uh, say this one wrong i said just or x minus y assume and saved it okay and debug it uh, evaluated it will go on run 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 now it will show me it's not working really so i am getting now errors failed i have first test failed second failed so it did pass to the first one one and three i expected to get four it received minus two because the formula is wrong and then here pass this one expected 270 but received 260 so all of them failed because my code was wrong and now the student will know if their code is, is correct or not so now we'll click that it will go and run again and now it will say all the three are successful very good so that basically how it is so your student now have confident that their code is is running now we look at the submission here and here you can add some uh, you can submit a file if you allow the student to submit an external uh, file uh, you, you can do that uh, uh, by just uh, take, uh, dropping the file here they can look at their uh, submission view the code they have if I just click here, it's just loading for a few seconds. You can see now the student uh, submission. You can see this one. Okay, back here. Now this student already submitted. So this is what the student has submitted. Uh, this is the date uh, on submissions and we can download a copy of their submission uh, what they submitted and this is the result of that submission and the student received perfectly 100 out of 100 on on that uh, assignment that's it so if i log out from here and now logging as a faculty i can see what my student has done Okay, back here, I am in the course. I think this is the course. And coming here into, into this one. And, and then you can see I am a faculty now looking at this is a submission been, uh, been a submission list here, sorry. This is a submission list, and there is one from student one uh, submitted, and he did four uh, submissions because uh, it was testing many different things. But same, this is the submission he did, received 100, and everything is fine. I can go here and look at the, at the grade, and I can uh, write some comments here or adjust the grade and explain 
why I adjusted because I noticed here he did not use any comments uh, code was organized fine but the comments are not used and we need all the students use commenting on all their coding so we can go there and and adjust this one and add feedback and say it's done so that basically how the uh, uh, VP I'll work and here are the steps you go through you can see they are very simple steps yes my example is very basic and very simple example but as you can see you can you can do unlimited things with it and one thing we did not test if a student prompt uh, here added uh, system dot our dot print and ask the user to enter data will that affect the outcome no it will work fine because it's looking at those variables read from the user and what produced um, you can also do functions you do classes you, there's so many things you can do uh, to test your student and now our student have something that they really can practice and show their programming abilities and competences thank you for listening